Hello everyone, Strategic Sage here with another AI War 2 case study. And this is going to be a fairly low level one. We're going to be spending a couple of episodes on this to make sure that I'm not skipping over too much. But this is the second quick start in the basic category, Double Difficulty 5 AIs. And it was a fairly new player beating their head against this scenario, unable to get past it. And they're asking for some advice on Steam on the Discord. And they were kind enough to let me use their save file for a video, so... I really appreciate that. Without that willingness, this video would not be happening. So we're going to take a look as we normally do with case studies. What was done well, what was not, how are we going to fix the situation? Now we have these four planets here. We've got 136 AI progress. We have some issues going on. We have a CPA coming in a few minutes. We have Instigator coming. That's going to be boosting the Hunter fleet budget. It actually has been for quite some time, as we can see. And then we have some planets that we've lost. So that's a bit of an issue. A little bit of a battle going on here, but we seem to be okay at the moment. Now the issue that the player that the save comes from had is they're primarily using their fleet to defend. And they're unable to expand any further. And they'd reached a point where AI progress was high enough. They couldn't fend off the attacks of the enemy in the long term. And they were eventually worn down. So... What are we going to do about all this? Well, we have a lot of issues to handle, but let's take a look at how we got here. The three planets that we have lost were in Kitazo and Druid and Helicon. And those planets were taken and abandoned for the purpose of getting some ships, which that's actually thinking a little bit more outside the box than most new players will do. So I will congratulate that part of it, but we can't afford to do it that much this early. Really should only abandon a system if you don't have another choice. They realize they couldn't defend them. But you should think twice about whether you're actually going to go in there before you do it. Because at 136 AI progress with three of these systems, that means we spent 60 AI progress. Almost half of the AI progress that we've gained in the game has been on those scenarios. And that's just simply way too much. You can't afford to spend AI progress capriciously like that. That's the majority of our AI progress issue. Also, plus one from letting them hill, kill a human cryopod earlier in the game. So, that's one AI progress and 7,500 energy that is gone to us permanently. And also, plus five from a troop accelerator, which I personally wouldn't have taken out, but you can make an argument for it, especially at low difficulty. That was in Yuba here. I would not usually knock out troop accelerators unless they're on adjacent planet that's probably Mark four or higher. Low Mark planets, it's just not going to hurt you much. But, again... You can take that one either way, and you can argue it that you might hack it or knock it out. So, that's pretty much okay. Now, science is mostly good. We have force fields, raid, exotic, and four in piercing. And I think the only one here that I would say I definitely wouldn't do is that final level of piercing. But I think that's enough science spent in this, and we really need some science elsewhere that I'm actually going to spend a small amount of hacking to use the respect science option. And let's get those four piercing investments back for five points. So I am wanting some piercing. There are quite a few ships that benefit from it. You can see the numbers here that piercing is the best category. So it's not like there wasn't good thought going behind this. But two levels or three at the most is all I will do at this point in the game. I generally think you want to wait a little bit further before you go all in. And also, you want to make sure you leave enough science to invest in other elements. We really want to have a turret hull upgrade, so we're going to boost that. And then, let's see, what else are we going to want? Well, I think Station Keepers is probably a good one. It's nice and cheap. Now, for economic reasons that we'll get into in a bit, I'm going to want a logistical command as well. And then we can put some more into some other ones of these. Like, for example, artillery is pretty cheap. I think early on it's better to diversify and get like one or two marks in multiple weapons techs because they're so much cheaper at the lower end. So if I put one in artillery, disruptive is going to help a bunch of our turrets. And then I'm going to hold that now and later when we get more science I'll invest more. I'm probably definitely at least going to go up one more level in piercing eventually. Just not quite yet. So I've weakened our fleet in order to have a little bit more balanced approach and improve our defenses. So moving on from there then, let's take a look at our hacking. And this is the part 
where I have to stop being so congratulatory and really criticize some of what's going on. We have attempted seven hacks, all against ARS, all to get frigates, and we failed one of them. So that means that we've actually done six of these. Okay, well, you can defend some of these. Like, for example, these three I would defend simply because we got the reduced price by controlling the system the ARS was in. Now, I would suggest balancing out more between frigates and strike craft. Frigates are more of a support type of unit in general. It's kind of like putting your artillery on the front line of a main battle in a large war to get all frigates. So, I think the frigate fixation here is causing some problems. But... It's not too bad at the beginning. Then we went and hacked Tota three times, and these, I mean, we spent 80, 9, 114 hacking points to get a few more lines of frigates, and it's they're simply not worth that much. I don't really think, in general, you want to hack an ARS. You definitely don't want to do the final higher-level hacks on the ARS in a system that you don't control. They're just not worth it. You're putting hacking into something that's not going to give you a good return on your investment. And, you know, the planet down here is Tota, where there's a major data center that we're eventually going to want to capture because a very easily defensible one off here on the side of the system. So, particularly since we're going to want to capture this eventually, I would have found another solution to bolster my fleet for sure. But the biggest problem that we're going to have is that we haven't invested in any turrets. Not hacking for turrets is the biggest crime that has happened in this game. So if we take a look at what we actually have, we're going to get rid of all of our turrets, and I'm going to explain why. We need to rebuild them in different places. You notice down here, they're all underneath the shield. And that's generally a bad idea for turrets, because you're going to have their damage. They're, the Bastille turret benefits from being underneath the shield, but almost all of the rest of them, you're not going to want them underneath a shield. It's better to have them out further where they can hit the enemies further away from your command station, and also where they're going to do their full effect of damage. Because what happens when they're clustered in like this, enemy just goes after the command station, and they're never diverted by attacking the turrets. If they're firing at your turrets, you can rebuild those. They fire at your home command station, your command station is dead. So that's just not what we want to do. And then we're going to knock out all of these. And I'm going to rebuild limited amounts of my turrets here. And the reason for that is, again, it's just going to be economical. But we don't need either any of these that are over here by this. Because this is going to a system that we control. So we want to focus down in these areas... And those of you who have watched me play before know what I'm doing here. I am going to set them up so they can cover the command station, but in the direction of the wormhole. I'll do the same thing over in this direction. And then I'm not going to put up any more of my battle station ones just yet, because we're not going to have the energy. I always want, though, to have the maximum force fields. I think that's always a good idea, particularly since we've invested in those. Let's definitely put up some tachyons as well. Of course, we're going to hit Z to show our range and make sure we're matching range to a reasonable degree. And same thing here. And then let's put up our tractors. And then we're just going to focus them all in this general direction. Okay. So, I'm, again, we could put more from those, but I'm not actually going to do that now. But we're looking pretty good now with these up. And I'm going to accept that as being our defense in this area. Battle stations, you can move back down into this zone. And if we look at our other planets, we have kind of the same issue. You know, again, turrets underneath. So we're going to reposition those. And we want more force fields up. And all of that. But we're going to hold off on this. We'll see why in a bit. And then over here, we're going to switch you over right away to logistical. This is the other thing. If we look at what type of command stations we have. This was economy. This is economy. 
There's no reason for a military one here. I can't switch it while there's a fight going on in the system. We're not allowed to do that. But the military command it works good as a choke point, but it's not actually stopping anything because they can still hit us from these directions down here. So I don't really have a reason to want to do that. And the economic command stations we don't particularly want at this point because they're exposed to the enemy. Now, if you're an advanced player, you can get away with doing that sometimes as sort of a bait technique. But we're not at that level in this particular run. So what we're wanting to do here, let's go ahead and eliminate these as well, is again, reshuffle our defenses. And we're going to want to head them towards these two systems. So we're just going to aim that vector in between. And again, we're doing the same thing now here with our logistical stations. We're going to have the possibility of gravity generators. Slowing down the enemy, always a benefit. And let's see, let's get some tachyons out there. Okay, so we'll do something like this. I always like to have one by the command station. Tractors by our tachyons. And again, we've got these tractors out here. We don't want them there. Let's take them down. So I'm wanting to spend all the metal to reposition. We have very limited defenses. So what defenses we have, it's really important that we maximize them at the current point in time. And then the paralysis mines, I like to put just in front of the tractors. The reason for doing that is, you know, they're going to be ships that get past the tractor beams. And the ones that do that will then hit the mines. And all of that should do very nicely for us. Now let's take a look at our ships. We have a bunch of different fleets. Now we want to keep a spare fleet in every system. If we mouse over, for example, this one. You see in the tooltip there it says we're getting 1.1 times metal per second. 1.1 times energy because it's been at the plant and not crippled for more than five minutes. So we want to maximize our economy by leaving a ship like that in place. So this one, we're going to take all the ships out of that. Agile transports are faster. We're going to want some fleets for mobile defense. So we're going to definitely want to put our ships into a transport that's fast. That's definitely going to help us. That's another point in switching over to logistics stations, by the way is that you can get additional speed boost as you move throughout your empire so it's faster to relocate. So if we take our fleet number three and we're going to do the multi-swap and take everything from that, what is it, Bragalron fleet, we're just going to switch all of this over. There we go. And we're going to load everybody up into that. Now, in here, we're going to keep fleet number seven. We're going to try to hide underneath there. But this is the one that's going to give us our bonus in this system. And up here, all of our ships are fighting. So we don't really want to switch anything around there. I'm going to put both of my support fleets under the same hotkey. And I always like to have one for my battle stations, even though I don't need to use it yet. So let's see, let's put 8 isn't used right now. So we'll go ahead and make our battle stations as 8. And so the general idea here is we're going to get organized. We're going to divide up our fleets in a little bit better way. And let's fight off this in here now. Let's get some action going. You can see our energy has gone down. I'm going to leave my defenses as in in this, as is, I should say, in this system for the moment. And we're just letting all of our ships go to work on the enemy. Until we have secured our situation. Chasing down the last of them here. Of course, we're plowing through our metal pretty good, but it's it's necessary in this particular scenario. Now, 
Okay. We cleared out the enemy, so that will allow us to switch over. And we're going to knock out a bunch of all the turrets that were in here. Let's close in our force fields a little bit more. Okay. And now, of course, we're going to do the same routine in here. We are going to get rid of our pikes. And we don't really want our tractors in this arrangement. Having them all at the same level so the enemy will divide their fire between them, they'll all hold the enemy at once, is much better than that sort of a line. And I think we have just enough space here to cover both these entries with one vector. By the way, another thing that this particular player did very well is the fact that they're building, like this station here, and we saw it in the other systems also, they're building it on top of the wormhole that leads deeper into their territory towards the home world. So that is another item that we can congratulate for. It's definitely not all negative here. We just need to clean up those parts that are not what you might call optimal. So, tachyons. Just put a couple of these over here, and a couple over here, and one by the command as usual. And we're gonna throw up our tractors as well. And our paralysis mines. Now those we want more on a direct line, so I'm actually gonna put them more all the way over here okay so something like that should work reasonably well now let's look at our fleets that we have in here okay we've got one regular transport we've got a combat factory we have a cloaked and another transport we want to move everything that we've got in here into the cloaked because that's going to be a better one for our mobile defense and attack we're going to leave one transport in here and then another transport in here to get an economic benefit from the free transport in Glossus. So we want to take all the ships from Axtix and Jantet. And we're going to swap those out. Whoops, that's one too far. It's not a lot of them, but we'll take whatever they have. Okay, load up in number five. Number two can go this way. And also we want you to come back here. We're going to just sort of meet our fleets back that direction. Let's have both of our support fleets come here. Okay, now you're ready to come back. So now we're, we're making some progress toward being organized here. Let's move you down this way. We still haven't done anything in this area, but I think we're going to be ready to soon. And then up here. Let's make sure, yep, you're in a pretty good location. This factory is a little bit further away than I'd like, but it's not too bad. All of this is building up. I'm liking all of that. And I think we can probably now afford to switch this. So let's see. Switch to logistics. Yep. We're still good. And we want to make sure that we have, again, the force field. We do the same thing again, although this is the only entry point. So I'm going to do this a little bit weirdly. We're just going to throw these down here. We're going to put mines all the way up around in front of this. Couple tachyons, you know, tractors, and these, I'm going to actually put them underneath the force field in this particular case. Don't often get a chance to do that, but those can go right in there. Gravity generators, not really going to be worth much here, because they're going to come in right on top of us. So I'm just going to sort of leave that as it is. Now, we're going to be churning through a whole bunch of metal here, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that for the time being. Okay, and now we have our two fleets, fleet number five, 
fleet number three. And let's just select all of you. Unload. So now what I basically want to do here is we're running out of metal, but I want to diversify my fleet between these two fleets. Because particularly with two AIs, they can hit us with, for example, two waves at a time, maybe in different places. Maybe Hunter Fleet comes at one point, and there's a wave another place. So I think having two fleets is going to be the right balance to have a significant force in each fleet, but not have all my eggs in one basket. So that's what I want to do for the time being. If we take a look at our two fleets, we can see that clearly there's much more in three than there is in five. So we're going to steal some. And there's actually a few more in one of these fleets that I missed. Where is Dino at? Seven. Oh yeah, seven. That's the one that was already in here as well. Okay, so I need to, I need to take those also. So we're definitely going to take those. And then I'm just going to take half of these other ships and just see where that ends up. Okay. 79, 67. That seems to be a reasonably good mix to me. Okay, so now what are we going to do? Well, for the moment, we're going to sit here and wait because we need metal. I don't want to go particularly aggressive and attack or anything until we get metal up. But in sort of a longer term picture, once we stabilize here, I want to limit what the AI's attacks are, and then I want to escalate our turret defenses so that we can free up our fleet to more easily go on offensive operations and get into more of a balanced approach where our fleet can largely attack and our turrets are gonna give us the defense. And it's worth mentioning for those who aren't aware, the reason why you want to defend with turrets, one of them, is they're immobile, so okay, that's a weakness. But they're much more efficient combat-wise in terms of how much energy they consume. Okay, they're going to attack us right here, so we're just going to wait. Uh, they're going to hit us in glasses as well. And I think our fleets are just strong enough to see these... Okay, we got 53 and 62. That gives us a bit of a size in terms of how much we're going to get hit. But I'm going to take fleet number 5 move them up to glasses and leave the other one here and that should be enough to fend this off and of course if i attack when i'm running out of metal i can't rebuild turrets as quickly i can't rebuild ships as quickly so i don't really want to do that and our battle stations are kind of useless right now because we don't have enough energy to build their turrets but that will happen in later on in the game so, okay, we're just starting to get positive here on metal at the moment. We're going to try to fend this off. And the CPA is going to be coming before too much longer as well. Five point two million. So we're just starting to build all of that up. My most immediate target is going to be the instigator when we get to it. Because that's just giving the AI ships in their hunter fleet for no good reason other than the fact that we haven't hit it yet. They're going to hit us down here in less than 30 seconds. But at least we're building up some metal to rebuild. So we're not going to immediately have trouble rebuilding whatever they knock out. I notice that we can't build, actually we don't have the mines available here on the home world other than the area mines which I'm not putting up so but not the paralysis mines that comes with a logistics station so that's why I don't have those in place so we're engaged on both planets and why do we not have more than that on glasses did I move my fleet to the wrong... Oh, they're coming here. I thought they were coming up here. I did move my fleet to the wrong place. No problem. Let's move it back. So yes, defending the right system. Always beneficial. You see all these paralysis mines that have uh, detonated themselves. 
Most of their ships can't move because they're held in tractor beams. But now in both cases, we outnumber the enemy. And here comes our CPA. 110 strength, which we can tell is virtually nothing compared to what it'll be at higher levels. But this is now up to about 270. So that's a significant amount of threat for this point in the game. And we're going to want to be careful until we get that down lower. We want to make sure that we defend. We just move our fleets around and stop the enemy wherever they hit us. We are definitely wearing down their numbers. All this is going well. We just need to keep it up. Looks like we're getting hit in Shiori. So, let's hit up that way. Yep, and this is the beginnings of the CPA. Yeah, he didn't quite go through. See, they're not really, there's not enough of them to really do that much, although here comes some more. We've got a few in Gatru. I think that we should probably move up that way with our other fleet. And so we can defend at both ends effectively. I still want to get this down a little bit more. I'd like to get that closer to 100. And our metal is hanging on, but it's not going anywhere in a hurry. So our economy really can't support us being more aggressive either. Looks like this is where the majority of it is going to hit us. They're trickling in enough to keep a decent amount in here. But we're chopping them down. And, okay, they're going to have a small group. This is a wave that's just going to recapture Do it, But we really can't really concern ourselves with that right now. They recapture those planets. We can just take them back from them eventually at no AI progress cost. It'll cause us a little bit of extra fighting, but nothing permanent. I think they're done hitting us on the other side. And this will be finished soon. And in comes more. As long as we're fighting more CPA ships, I think we're doing just fine to stay right where we are.
And when we're in a situation like this where we don't have a lot of turrets, we really do need to be pretty cautious. Because our planets can't fend for themselves. If we notice the wave size that we saw, you know, say low 50s, low 60s, right in that category. And then, you know, we've got 25 defense here in Gatru. We have 18 here in Glassus. This one has 18. So we don't have enough to fend off the waves. So I think we can call that as having been successfully stabilized now. Took almost 10 minutes on the game clock to do it and quite a bit of shifting around, but we got it done. So now coming back next time when we return to this, we're going to take a look at how do we attack from here? How do we improve the strategic situation without compromising our defense and gradually grow towards AI homeworlds? So I'll be looking forward to that. Thanks for watching everybody. And AI War 2 case study will continue.